just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Merciful, compassionate Father, thank you for yet another opportunity to come before you, to pray, to praise you, to read your word, to fellowship with like-minded believers. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for waking us up in our right minds. Thank you, loving Heavenly Father, for saving us, calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you, God, for this program. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, mighty God, for the miracles that you work this morning. Thank you for the many miracles you have worked thus far, for the answers to our prayers. We praise you. We come this morning with our cups turned up. Fill us. Fill us, God, with love. Love for you and love for each other and love for fellow men everywhere. Fill us with grace and mercy and compassion. Bless everyone on YouTube and on Facebook and right here on the Zoom platform and on X. Bless your people, God. And may your name be exalted high above the earth so that everyone will know that truly there's a God in heaven to serve and a hill to shun. Thank you for what you have done, what you're about to do, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. It's People Loving People Online Morning Mana. And I am delighted to be here with you again this morning to worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God has been good to us in that he has given us another opportunity to come and worship before him this morning. We're looking at priorities of faith and what an experience we've been having in the word, talking about the Holy Spirit, reading the Holy Word of God, listening to testimonies, the stories of people who are walking with Jesus and how he has been leading their lives. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the program this morning again. I am your truly Fitzroy Bailey sitting in this morning to serve and to lead you in worshiping and praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Welcome to those who are on YouTube and on Facebook and on X. If you are here joining us this morning for the very first time, we invite you to just bask with us in the presence of Almighty God and just know that we are happy and delighted that you are online with us this morning. Welcome. We want to continue with that special moment with God, where we talk with him, where we, we bask in his presence, we listen to him and allow him to do a mighty work in our hearts, in our minds. Let's talk with God just now. The passage for meditation as we prepare to speak with our Lord a little bit more is taken from Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. And it reads, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. I could not stay. Let's meditate on the word of God this morning.
Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him. He is thy health and salvation. All you here, now to his temple draw near. Let us join in glad adoration. Welcome, welcome back again. Welcome to those who have just joined us. Welcome to all those who are joining us uh, for the first time. Welcome to the people who are on YouTube and Facebook and on X. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a joy to see all of you this morning. We continue our journey. We continue our journey together in the reading of the Bible. Specifically, we're reading the book of Acts, and it has been a blessing so far. We have learned that our God is a promise keeper. Our God hears and answers prayer. He comes through on time. Even if it, took, it takes a long time, he will come through because he is faithful. If we trust him, though there may be persecutions, he will hear us. We continue to read Acts chapter 7 this morning. Of course, we need three persons to read, and the last person will read four verses. Three persons will be reading three verses each, and the last person will be reading four verses. Of course, we're always inviting new persons who have never read on the platform to join in so we can hear your voice and you can join the conversation in being a part of what we do here. Let's listen to the theme song at this time, He Leadeth Me. And then when we get back, we continue our reading for this morning. Amen. <clears throat> amen. 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 All right. So we have three hands up. Sister Marjorie Cross, Sister Ventura Powell, Sister Derma Virgo. I love this. Three fresh voices. 
All right. So I'm giving you all the co-host right now. So you'll be able to open your mic on your own. You can prepare by opening your mic and prepare to read. So the reading just flows from one verse to another. All right. It's good if you read from your Bible. It's going to be on the screen, but it's good to read from the Bible direct. All right. So Sister Marjorie will start, then Sister Ventura, then Derma. All right. So let's pray. Father, thank you for yet another opportunity to read your holy words. Come Holy Spirit and be our teacher again this morning. Open our understanding. Give us receptive and obedient hearts. May we do what you say. Lord, transform our lives through the reading of your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so here beginneth, we go into the word at this time. We start at verse 21. Let's go. Sister Marjorie. Yes, and good morning. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him in, took him up, and nursed him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptian and was mighty in the words and in deeds. And when he was full, 40 years old, he came into his heart to visit the brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian, for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sir, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst kill the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begot two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a mouthful we have read this morning. And now it's time to share what the Spirit has said to you. It could be any of these persons who have read or anyone else on the platform who would like to join in the conversation. And we'll talk about what God wants you, wants me to do uh, as you prepare to share your pointers. This is story is following on about Moses. We saw where uh, he was because his life was threatened from being a, a, when he was a babe. His mother, <clears throat> having done the best she could with him for up to three months, placed him in the river, and uh, the daughter of the king found him and nurtured him up grew him up. Look at this. This thought came to me um, again that in hiding his son from the, <laughs> the Egyptians wanted to kill him. Where did God hide him? Right in the belly of the Egyptians, in the house of the Pharaoh. Look at that. God, so I have an elder um, who used to say, hey, God, you're tricky fire <laughs> now. God hid his child in the very house of the person who wanted to kill him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. God is just awesome. He finds some ways to do some stuff that just blew your mind. Mm -hmm. One, two. These are the pointers that jump out at me. God is able to take care of you. 
God is able to take care of you, even if he has to use those who are against you to protect you. <laughs> hey, God will take care of you. Be not afraid. Don't be fearful. God can and will take care of his children. Just trust him. Just obey him. He will take care of you. Sister, uh, with this Galaxy Tab A, I see your hand up. You may go ahead and share. Good morning, good morning. Pastor took out my word out my mouth. Share it in your way. Share it in your way. <laughs> in your own words. <clears throat> when we are in this world, but we are not of this world, and we are here mm -hmm. to proclaim God's word. Moses was predicted by God to take the children of Israel, to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. Yet he was in Egypt as a prince mm -hmm. to to the Pharaoh. But he knew his roots because his mother taught him. And we as Seventh-day Adventists, we are called to be light bearers of the world. Yes, we are in the world. We must do the work of the master. God took Moses out by showing him two of his brethren fighting. How did he know that they were his brethren if he was not told? We have the Bible to, telling us how to live and to love each other. Yet we are joining with the world and doing everything what the world doing. Some Adventists, you put them out there, you don't know them different from the world. We mm. are not supposed to suck up the world. We are supposed to be the head and to tell others. Moses was called and so we are called. It was the time for him to move when he was 40 years old. So we are here on borrowed time. Please, Lord, help us to spread the good news of salvation that we won't be a castaway when you come. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, Thank you so much. Hello, Rowan. There you go. I'm giving you the prompt to open your mic. Let's try that one more time. There you go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My sister just shared some of what I was going to say, but briefly, what this shows me is that God always has a plan of redemption. Amen. Moses, the, 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 the Pharaoh wanted to kill all the baby boys, which included Moses. But God gave Moses' mother, put a thought in Moses' mother, which, as you said before, led Moses to, the, to be protected in the same house, mm. in the house of the same person wants to kill him. And look at the end of it. Even though Moses had to run from Egypt, God brought him back because his own people would have turned against him. Moses had to run, but God brought him back to save the same set of people. So as, as, as Christians, we can stand assured that when we are going through some stuff, God already planned it out for us. So when we are there worrying and fretting, we don't know what the end result might be, but we serve a God who knows the beginning from the end. So we need to stick with him. God bless. Amen. Powerful point, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Sister Gwendolyn, I'm about to give you the prompt to open your mic. You can go ahead and try opening up. All right. Uh, seems like she's not getting it. Let's try Sister Derma. Um, morning again in reading. I What jumped out at me is that being a Christian doesn't mean that time we wouldn't we won't be impulsive we won't act on impulse because i'm sure when moses saw the two brethren fighting 
and he intervened, he acted on impulse. But we are thankful that God does not read the heart as how man see us. Because God saw in Moses what no one else saw. And even though he acted on impulse and killed that gentleman, that killed that man and buried him in the sun, God had to take him apart and perfect him for his work and bring him back to save his people. Amen. Thank you so much. God took him apart and perfected him or continued his work in his life to help him to overcome that uh, that that behavior of if somebody says something that you don't like, you just do something. Right. Yeah, you know, God is. Thank you so much for that point, sis. God bless you. Once again, we try Sister Gwendolyn. Just look on your phone or whatever you're using. When I give you the prompts, you just click on the, I think it's the right side, mm -hmm. the blue button, and it should open your mic for you. Still not getting through. Let's try this some milk. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What really what really I look at it uh, is this. Um Moses was placed in a basket on the river on the river. The um the very people that were against the, the, the um God's people, those are the um that is the one that found him. Then he went back to his mother to be nursed. A 12-year-old he lived from his mother's home and went back to Pharaoh. I went to Pharaoh's house. But what I look at it as 12, the glittering and the nice things, the very what he grew up into that house never dent him from the teaching of the teaching of his mother. Right, and because of that, he grew up knowing that he was a special, a special child from God, and that the, the, the um what he really got into Pharaoh's house never changed him from the person he is that the mother taught him, and some of us as we have our children, and yes, we have them to the family altar morning and evening. But as they grow up, they turn away. Yes, I know they still have the message in them, right? They still have the message. And then with Moses now have to flee from Egypt, he, God took him to Midian or in the wilderness to greater him down, to take him down a page because he was very uh, aggressive. So with that aggression, he could not lead his God's people, so God have to take him down a page that he can be the person that God wants him to be. Amen. God is always working on us to make us more like himself, to display the character that he has, character of love, kindness, and patience, and compassion. Yes, I see three Two more hands, and then we're gonna take some responses from. Well, one of them is gone, from, from uh, from YouTube and the other channels. Well, Smiley. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, family. Okay. I come in agreement with all the facts that has been stated, but I just want to emphasize, and it's not new because I heard it mentioned already. The training of Moses. Mm -hmm. And also God's eternal plan for our lives. And that no force or power or empire or authority on earth can usurp God's eternal plan for our lives. However, there is a role for us to play and it's to train our child aright. And what better training and when, bet when this training is best to start even from before conception. We ourselves train ourselves to love the Lord, to love his word, so that we have something can impart to our child. And when our child immerse himself into this training and grow up to see us as their mentors, love the Lord, they also automatically will grow to love the Lord. And as Moses grew and loved the Lord, he had a 
personal independent relationship with the Lord. And remember now, God has the master plan. So when the master plan and our training merge together, you know that is going to be a dandemite life for God. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I am asking us to love the Lord so that we can impart what we have come in relationship with the Lord to someone else, our children. And it doesn't have to be biological, our children at large. Tonight they will be having children baptism, our children at large. Don't hold them back, devote them, covenant with them to the Lord. And God has his master plan also to save our children. Let us do our part so that we'll be all together proud of our children as they grow up and wean themselves from the world and get more connected with God, whom we also love. Amen. Thank you so much. Powerful points coming out this morning. A point keep jumping at me, but I want to take as many persons as possible. Sister Gwendolyn, you finally open your mic. Go ahead and share. Yes, I look at it as um, when um, Moses daughter found when um. Daughter. The, the, the daughter phone Moses. <clears throat> we wouldn't know what would happen to him if, if she did take him straight straight to the, the palace. But um Bose sister was there to intervene and say he will get a nurse for him. And the nurse he got for him was his mother. And in fact, uh, teach him the way of the Lord and Groom him there for 12 years that he may know God and know that the God of heaven save him from the slaughter mm -hmm. of the Pharaohs. So God is in control at all times because what? His mother take him there and groom him and tell him about, and tell him about God. The God, of it, the God that she know, she tell him about him and teach him the way of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That when he reached the Pharaoh's house, he will be a different person, not be like the Egyptian. That the part I look at it and get out of it. When he reached the Pharaoh's house, Amen. Thank he's you a so different much. person. Powell, powerful, powerful. His mother trained him up, so when he got to the Pharaoh's house, he was still, he was still living in accordance with it. Discipline and training and nurturing. Thanks for the smiley made that point as well. Thank you so much. Sister Keisha, let me go ahead and share. Pastor Bailey, you know, the first morning we started reading this part of the Bible, I was multitasking. So I wasn't really following the screen or going through my Bible. And I had to run so when I heard it, I had to run back to my the screen and I looked to say, are we still reading Acts? Because I thought somehow we were reading the wrong chapter. Why am I bringing this up? God's words stand fast, mm -hmm. whether Old or New Testament. Remember, all of this started in the Old Testament, you know, mm -hmm. and here we are being reminded that God's words stand fast. And as you rightly said um, when you started, um, God is a promise keeper. He It was done in the Old Testament, and here we are in the New Testament being reminded that what God promises us, he will deliver. What, a, what an awesome God we serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will deliver. Here's a point that, as I mentioned, keeps jumping out at me. Um, human beings will be human beings. Moses sought to help his brethren. And uh, <clears throat> he had to run from Egypt because he helped out his brethren. Um, I wonder if you see where, where I'm going. He had to run from Egypt because he helped out his brethren. Um, sometimes people who you try to help will turn against you. Um, yeah. <laughs> people who you help will turn against you, and you're surprised. 
But you know, God works in miraculous, mischievous ways, as my elder would say. Um, and God took that situation because God had a plan. God had a plan that Moses would be the one to lead his people out of Egypt. He allowed him to grow up in the house of the Egyptian. He had to run away to the wilderness, but God it was not finished with him yet. Huh? God was not finished with him yet. So even if even if you are thrown away, you have to run away. God is not finished with you yet. He has some work for you to do. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God's mission and purpose for your life. And don't be bitter against people who would have turned against you. Don't be bitter against them. It makes no sense. It would show that you are you have not grown. You are just like them still. Yeah, so when you have grown, um, you know, it, it was out of concern that he that he sought to help his brethren. And no, yeah, he did wrong in terms of killing the, the gentleman, but you know, God, God, wow, this is this is something else to think about. Sometimes in doing what you believe is the right thing, it ends up looking in the eyes of others to be the wrong thing. And even if you have to run away, God will take care of you. He will forgive you. He will turn you around and he can use you still to do a mighty work. Because it was after this that God used him to lead his people out of Egypt. What does God want me to do? What does God want you to do? Be faithful to him. Help as many people as possible. Even those who sometimes may turn against you. Still help. Still do your best. Still reach out. Still be Christ-like and godly in what you do. Wow, wow, wow. Word this morning. Uh, we're wrapping. We're moving. We're moving. We'll continue tomorrow morning. We'll continue tomorrow morning with verse from verse 31. And onwards. All right, so we're going to be moving into the prayer closet at this time where we'll continue the discussion. Oh, I didn't take the folks from, from our YouTube channel, and some good pointers are there, you know. Some good pointers are there. Uh, let me scroll quickly to one or two of them. Veronica McDonald says, Train up a child in the way he should go, so when he's old, he will not depart from it. We don't want to leave you all out, guys. We want to take what you're saying sharing discussion we must teach our children the right thing as servants of god all right moses thought that israel would understand that they would be delivered by his hand but they did not as the word of god says train up a child all right we got a point jennifer gale says let let's impart god's word to our children they're coming out over and over again let's impart god's word to our children god as sylvia says god has a purpose for all of our lives we only have to stay in his will and move forward in his grace. Powerful point. Amen. Mad says, amen. God is always working on us to bring us to perfection. Let us humble ourselves. Let us humble ourselves. All right. Uh, we could go on, but time is of the essence this morning. It's gone away from us. Um, Donna says, that show me that God is with his children. It don't matter where you are, God will be there to take care of you. Powerful points, powerful points. Who is like God, who searches hearts and knows who we are and our capabilities like Moses, like Paul. May we learn to trust God always. Liz J, little Liz, Liz Paul Edley says that, all right? Uh, Moses was a type of Jesus, although his own people kill him, he will come back for us everett williams powerful points you know man and you can go back and see the comments on there friends please share the link with somebody else that they too may come thank you for the comments now i invite you to like and subscribe and press the the notification button so when we come on in the mornings you are able to pick up the meeting right and share it with others that they too can be a part of what we do here. We're moving into the prayer breakout room at this time. 
And the passage for meditation as we go in is Jeremiah 30, verse 17. God says to us, For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because they call you an outcast, saying, This is Zion. No one seeks her. God promises to heal. God promises to restore. And what he promised, he always does, always keeps his word. Let's remember to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for Sister Rachel Buckley, for the evangelistic campaigns taking place all around, uh, for all marriages, for grieving families, for the Priorities of Faith series. Let's go in and talk with our Father just now, and he will do a mighty work in and through our lives. Let's praise him in Let's mingle our prayers with praise as we talk this morning. Let's go. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. This is my story and this is my song, just praising my Savior, hallelujah, all the day long. Thank you, God, for this reading this morning, for the inspiration, the information that you have given to us again this morning. You are a promise-keeping God. You're a God who will take care of your children. You're a God who will do what it takes to fulfill the, the plan and the purpose that you have for each one of your sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. This Morning too, Father, I pray that you will consecrate this room unto your own self. Consecrate every person on this platform. Grow us in your grace. May we become more like Jesus. May we be holy humble, merciful, and kind, forgiving and loving, even to those who have hurt us. Oh God, let us demonstrate to the world what it means to be walking with Jesus. Father God, so often we allow people who have said things or done things to us to cause us to lose faith and turn away from you. But please, God, have mercy upon us and forgive us and fill us with your amazing love and grace. I pray for everyone in this room, everyone in the various breakout rooms this morning, and ask God that you'll do so much more, far more, exceedingly, abundantly more than we could ask or think. I pray again for Sister Rachel. You know her circumstance. She has requested prayer. God, you promised that when we pray, when we do call, you will do hear and you will answer. I pray for all the evangelistic campaigns taking place now. The preachers, the Bible instructors, the ushers, the crusade managers, everyone who, who is leading out, the chairpersons, the prayer warriors, everyone. I lift up before you and ask that you continue to pour out your spirit on your people and do a great and mighty work. Save to the uttermost those who are coming to you by faith, mighty God. Save hundreds, save thousands. Yes, save, Lord, save. Holy Spirit, move mightily among your people in Santa Cruz, in Portmore, in St. Thomas, in St. Mary all over Jamaica and the Caribbean and the world, mighty God, please save your people, I pray. I pray also for those marriages 
having challenges, marriages where couples have separated or even in the divorce courts. Lord God, I plead with you this morning that you show up and show yourself strong on behalf of your children who are hurting, who are having challenges in their marriages. And I praise you, God, that you will work it out in your own time. You are a counselor and you can fix everything that's broken. Lord God, move into these homes, move into these relationships. And God, I pray that you'll soften and subdue the hearts of the husbands and the wives. Teach them how to forgive. Teach them how to communicate. Teach them how to love you and to love each other. And work a miracle of reconciliation. Work a miracle of grace, mighty God. Turn things around in their favor and put the enemy to shame because he's the one who is destroying marriages and families. Please, God, cancel his plots and his schemes against your children, against this institution of marriage. Show up and show yourself strong. Father, I pray for the grieving members on this platform, the grieving members in your churches who have lost loved ones. God, I spoke with a young lady yesterday who has lost her uncle, and you could see, God, that it's hurting so much. I pray for her comfort and strength this morning. Renew her hope to know, God, that weeping may endure for a night, but that joy, hallelujah, comes in the morning. Lord Jesus, I pray for Sister <clears throat> Howell's family. I pray this morning for Sister James. I pray this morning for Viraj's family. I pray that you will comfort. I pray for Sister Dennis's family, the relatives still grieving the loss of a loved one, and many, many others. God, you know them. Please comfort and strengthen and give them hope in this time of bereavement. And Father, I lift up before you this platform one more time. Thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for the privilege to be a part of this great movement of destiny where we pray, where we seek you, where we call upon you, where we seek to direct minds to you and to <clears throat> build relationships with you. Loving Lord, I put before you this morning all those on our YouTube channel. I put before you this morning all those on Facebook, all those on X, and invite you, loving Father, to pay attention to their prayer request, to their heart's cry. Move into their experience, mighty God, and do a work that only you can do. Save to the uttermost those who are coming to you by faith. Loving Lord, I pray for Diane Lewis again this morning. You know her circumstance. You know the cry of her heart, mighty God. I plead with you this morning that you will show up and show yourself strong. Show her the way to go and provide for her needs. Lord, I pray for Sister Thompson her family, for YG, for Haleen. I pray for Joy. I pray for Laureen Robinson and all of the persons she's requesting prayer for this morning. I lift up before you, mighty God, one more time. Cynthia Catnut, praying a prayer warrior, praying for revival and for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for Ivan Brown, for Vivian Mattison, for Elizabeth Clark and Doreen Bryan and Claudia Beckford and all of your children who are also on Facebook, Lindley Moore and Nellie Zander and all of the others who I can't see God, but they're there. Those who are on X viewing this program this morning as well. We thank you, God, for them listening in and ask that you hear the cry of their hearts, answer their prayers and do a mighty powerful, awesome, miraculous, tremendous work in their lives, Heavenly Father. Mighty God, I pray for our children 
I plead with you for their salvation, for their leading, for the leading of your Holy Spirit in their lives. I pray, God, that you'll take back their minds from whence the enemy has taken it. Oh, God, take back what the devil has stolen this morning. I pray for all the men in your church who are supposed to be leaders, priests in their homes. Teach your men how to be men of God, how to be leaders of God in their homes, in their church, in their communities, on their jobs. Oh God, remove every besetting sin from the men of God. Remove from us every weakness. And in fact, I pray God that you work to strengthen our faith in you. And mighty God, I pray for a revival this morning among our men, a revival of godliness, primitive godliness, a revival of, of true love and compassion one towards another, a revival of the passion that men once had for the souls of our fellow men. Sweet Jesus, hear your cries this morning and do exceedingly, abundantly more than I could ask or think. And I will praise you. I'll exalt you. Lord, I listen for the testimonies. I listen for the praise reports, mighty God. And I thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. We pray in Jesus' powerful, precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's time for praise and testimony. We can take maybe one or two this morning and then we'll go on to closing off this morning's program with our exercise program. We'll take Sister Gregory right away. Sister Gregory, I give you a minute to open your mic and share. Let me give you the prompt one more time. There you go. All right, Sister Gregory, not opening up this morning. Let me try Almina Bob King. All right, the hands are shooting up right here. Almina, I'm not seeing you opening your mic at all. Let's try Sister Ether. Let's try that. One. Okay, Almina's mic is open. You may go ahead. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning, mm -hmm. Pastor. I just want to give God a high note of praise this morning. I don't know if you remember last year, I came and I testified about my son's accident mm -hmm. who got his spinal damage. He's not walking, but he have life. All his mental <clears throat> faculties are intact. Praise and this, this morning is enough to praise God that he can move in his wheelchair, he can cook for himself, he can take his shower, he can even drive. And that is a blessing. But I still have the assurance that someday God is going to place him on his feet again so that he can stand up and testify how great is our God. Thank Amen. you, brethren, for your prayer. And let us continue to persevere. Let us continue to boys each and everyone's spirits up. I just thank everyone this morning. How great is our God. Oh. Praise the Lord. How great is our God. Sister Gregory, I see your mic open. I give you a minute. No, 30 seconds. <laughs> Again, I said 30 seconds. Thank God that I am here. I give a lot of praise and thanks for what he has been doing for me. And I thank God that I'm into a land where I can praise him without fear. And I can give him all the thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Praise <laughs> the Lord. You did it in 30 seconds. Sister Ethel, you may go ahead. <laughs> Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, saints of God. We know Satan is working and God is working. Since Sabbath, I mean, four of us from PLP could have gone by the cold and ice years of them. Mm. But, you know, God kept us. We were coming from Frankfield and there was a truck coming down. The truck stopped. The driver told me to come. But there's a river over with a steep gully over there and a river over there. But I see the way where I could go. But by the time I get almost to the pass in the middle of the truck, I realize that I'll, I'll just get nervous because I realized that I was too close to the edge. So I decided to go back closer to the truck and then it scrape off the whole side of the of the vehicle. Mm. Thank God I decided that because if it's not, it would be the other way. And b before we reach home, there was another thing again. The driver doesn't want to get out the way and there was a gully over there. But praise be to God, we were at that halt. 
The devil's still on me. Yesterday, my daughter went to the doctor, said she was having a headache. Went to the doctor. They have to get an ambulance to take her to the hospital. She did a test, a brain scan. They say she has a tear on her brain. Hmm. I'm just asking for prayer for her, you know, because, you know, the devil see that I decided no matter what may come my way, that I'm going to stand up for Jesus. And I thank everyone that prayed and are still praying. So they admit her in the hospital. Not sure what they're going to do right now. I'm in Jamaica and I might have to just run back. But just pray or her pray me up because I am not even going to cry. I'm not even going to worry. But for her, I know she will worry, but I'm not worried. I just leave everything in the hands of her. Oh, great is our God. Oh, great is our God. God will work it out. It's all in his powerful, almighty hand. We thank God that you all are still alive. The vehicle can be repaired. To God be the glory. Our lives, some lives have been once again spared. Sister Gwendolyn, we're going to try you for the last time. We're going to try you for the last time. Sister Keisha, can you get ready to do the intercessory prayer for us as we close this morning? Sister Gwendolyn, uh, there you go. Pastor, I went to my bed early last night. And when I went to my bed early, I slept until 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, I awoke with a pain in my hip. The pain was so bad. I said, Lord Jesus, what is this? Anyway, I come out of bed and I go use the bathroom and come back. And when I come back in the middle, I lie down and I said, Lord, what? please take care of this pain and stop the pain for me. I need some sleep. When I lie down and I stretch out my feet and I say, Lord, it is in your hand now. It is out of my hand. And when I lie down, I say, Lord, you know, it's alone in this room now, Father Jesus. I lie down there and I put the sheet on my two feet and I stretch out my legs. Pastor, you believe me, say, I lie down there. And the pain just disappear, and I don't know how the rest of the sheet over my body. But when, when I wake up in the night, I see my, my whole body is covered with the sheet. I when I wake up, I say, Thank you, Jesus. You covered me and put me to rest. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you. So I, I could some more sleep until in the morning. I just want to give God the honor and the and the good? for taking care of me and taking care of the pain Amen. that I was feeling. So I was re relieved of the pain through Hallelujah. the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. I was relieved that I could get a good night's sleep. So I just Amen. want to give God thanks this morning and I'm going to praise. Mm -hmm. We rejoice with you, sis. We rejoice with you. Thank you so much for sharing that testimony of God coming through for you, relieving you of the pain so you could get some more rest. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Thank you for those who read, those who prayed, those who participated in one way or another. Happy that you joined in. We invite you all to join in again tomorrow morning to be a part of this experience and of course for those who can we invite you to join in midday today so that you can experience another infilling of the holy spirit be strengthened and encouraged invite somebody to join in as well all right we move into sunrise total fitness as soon as we end here this morning we have the water challenge today is day 18 can you imagine that day 18 i trust that you are all drinking up your water water balances or electrolytes. Water helps maintain electrolyte balance, crucial for muscle function and nerve transmission. So you see another powerful benefit of drinking up your water. Drink your water, save your life, hydrate to elevate. Yes, and may God continue to bless you, not only during these 21 days, but you'll continue to Drink your water. We're hoping that you'll form the habit of drinking more water, the right amount of water each day. Six to eight glasses, we're told that we need to drink or we drink in accordance with our body mass index. 
all right? So we can maintain all of these functions in our body that water helps to contribute. Sister Keisha, I invite you to pray for us as we close this morning. Let us pray. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper. How great is our God. You are worthy to be praised. This morning we've come. We've been praying since 4.30. There are so many, and even before, some of us before we came on the platform, there are so many challenges. Satan is trying his best to devour us, to break our spirit, to take away our joy. But God, we know you are able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. So this morning, we placed before you all the requests. They were placed in the chat, Zoom, YouTube, Facebook, X. You've seen them. None of them would have slipped past your gaze because you're an all-seeing God. In fact, you, you said in your words, before we call, you will hear while we are yet speaking, you will answer. So even before these requests were typed in the chat, you heard, you saw, you knew, you know our pain or suffering. You know exactly what we're going through and how you're going to deliver. Just as though you delivered Moses, just as though you would have placed him in the enemy's house in order for him to turn around and deliver your children. Father, this morning we're calling upon you because we have no one else to call upon. We are expecting you to work in accordance with your will. And this morning we thank you for the pain, the deliverance from the pain for Sister Gwendolyn. Lord, we place Sister Heather's daughter into your hands this morning. Sister Heather has been serving you, God. She believes. In fact, you have worked a miracle in her life so she has no doubt this morning I should say place no doubt in her mind this morning that the same God who came through for her is able to do it for her daughter visit her daughter through the medium of your Holy Spirit be Dr. God to her Lord touch her and as the doctors go in, Lord, whatever they thought the problem was, show them the way so that Sister Heather will come on this very platform and she will give her testimony as to how you came through for her. Sister Gilbert, is, it, it, she, she's worried at this time, God, because her son too is sick. You see, when the devil can't get at us, you know, he will try through our children and our family members. But we want to tell Satan this morning that he's a defeated foe. We want to remind him this morning, God, we're reminding him that his end is going to be bitter and that we're not going to be sharing in hell with him. This morning, we ask Satan to move out of the lives of your people, God. Remove him. Deliver Sister Gilbert's son. And Father, the, the, the other requests, I tried to read them. Sister um, Riley's family, or the Riley's family, the mission, all the other requests. I'm just mentioning, mentioning a few, Lord, at this time. Come through for your people. Come through for your people, Lord. We await the answers. We await the testimonies. We await the praises. Because we know that our miracle work in God is going to do it. So as we lift our faith this morning, come through for us, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace today and forever.
God loves you much. Have a spirit-filled day. Always remember, brethren, you are special. You are unique. You are God's handmade. Walk in the spirit. Walk in confidence today because you are chosen. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God bless you.